Welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU radio. My name is Kumar Appaya and I belong to the Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Bombay. In this lecture, we are going to study an initial example of how we can estimate the delay. If you recall in class, the estimation of the delay of a signal S of t involved essentially maximizing the absolute value of the convolution of the received signal with the match filter. We will take a very simple template function or a set of simple template functions and then show that the peak indeed gives us a good estimate of the delay and we will confirm this by performing random delays as well and ensuring that we are able to estimate the delay correctly consistently with the maximum likelihood estimate based approach that we have seen in the class. Our next pursuit is delay estimation. In other words, maximum likelihood delay estimation. As we have covered in the lecture, in this case, if you take an overlap with the S of t, that is a template function, but modify it to have the different values of tau, a and theta, we can in effect just verify that the final solution boils down to maximizing the magnitude of y convolved with the matched filter and finding out the location tau that maximizes this modulus. This is what we will start with in the beginning. Let us begin by constructing a very simple example. I have first set the sampling rate to 19200. Now we will first create just a simple pulse and then see the impact of delay on this particular pulse. So let us begin. I am now going to first create a vector source. So I am going to do control F or command F, type VECT and grab the vector source and place it on my flow graph. Let us make the vector source uh, have a particular filter. Let us say that uh, let us say that we want the vector source to have about let us say 2000 or let us say 1000 samples. So let us actually create a variable that will hold our filter. So I'll say my pulse and we want to make sure that the length is a thousand or let's say let's keep the length to a thousand. So we're going to say plus square bracket zero that is this is going to create a list containing zero and we want as many elements as needed to fill in the length to a thousand. So we'll say length of my pulse okay or oh, we should say thousand minus length of my pulse so the reason is because my pulse will essentially be the pulse s of t and we're going to now start searching for the delay in this particular example so now my pulse is missing so let us create a variable so let's say control f or command f say my pulse sorry we i'll say variable v a or i and double click we'll say that this is my pulse and for starters let us just make this uh, let's say a hundred ones so i'm just going to say one times 100 so we are just going to have 100 samples of one followed by 900 samples of zero in fact this is uh, going to be this is going to be perfect because we can just now use this to perform our match filtering as well. Let's add our uh, throttle, but before that, let's make this into a float because we don't need complex. Let's add a throttle, control F, T, H, R and grip the throttle. We grab the throttle and we connect it, but of course we need to make the throttle into a float. Then remember, this is the template pulse which is sent and at the receiver, we are going to perform a convolution with the matched filter. The matched filter is just my pulse reversed. So of course it's symmetric in this case, but let me still just add it. So control F or command F, I'll say inter or let's say decimating, even though it's not doesn't matter, 
decimating FIR filter. We'll say float to float real taps and connect it. And the taps must be my pulse. And just in case, I'm just going to put square bracket colon colon minus one to reverse it. Even though this my pulse is symmetric, if you change the program, it will result in a pulse which is not symmetric. So I'm just swapping it around. And finally, I'm going to add a QT GUI time sync. So control F for command F. I'm going to say time and grab this QT GUI time sync. Double click it, make it float. Connect it. Now I'm just going to carefully choose the length of this number of points for this QT GUI time sync. Here we have a thousand and here we have my pulse which is of length 100. So this should ideally be about 1100 actually 1099 but I'm going to make this length 1100 so that I get a nice static kind of picture. Let me now run this flow graph. Uh, it's uh, it is moving a little probably because I did not get the, get the length correct. So in this case it is a thousand followed by a hundred. So it's may let me check if it is 1099 works. Okay, it's still moving. Oh, okay, let us just set it to 1000. That should essentially just take care of everything. Yes. So now if you execute this flow graph, you will essentially see this particular shape. And if you notice where the peak is, the peak is going to be at 0 0.514 millisecond. Okay. Now what does 0 0.514 millisecond correspond to? Let's inspect. I'm just going to open a Python prompt just to do some calculations. So we said it's 0 0.515, 0 0.515 milliseconds. So upon a thousand times 192000 corresponds to about 99 samples. And it's 99 samples from the beginning zero, which means it is the hundredth sample which makes complete sense because the length of the filter is a hundred. Now, if I add any amount of delay, then I will be able to figure out how much, you know, the shift of this peak will tell me how much the sampling point delay will be. In other words, I have not taken the absolute value here, but it's because it's already positive. But if I add a random delay in between this point, like between this and the decimating FAR filter, then the shift in the peak will tell me the exact sampling point. Just for fun, let's do that. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to do control F for command F and say delay. And let's just put the delay element here, make it float. And we'll make this delay something called R A N D O M random underscore delay. It's a variable and we need to get that variable. Okay. Now, this random delay, let us do one thing. Let us actually generate it randomly. So I'm just going to say control F or command F. I'm going to say constant or rather let me say a variable V A R I. And if I grab this variable and double click it and I'm going to say this is random underscore delay and I can use NumPy to get a random delay. I will do NP dot random dot rand int and let's say 0 through 50. So it's going to give me a number between 0 and 49. Of course, I have to import numpy as np. So I'll say control f or command f. And I'll grab the import block and say import numpy as np. Now we are set. Now every time I generate this a new random delay or every time I run this a new random delay will appear. If I run it again. Okay. Each time you run the flow graph, you'll essentially get a new random delay. For example, if you keep doing this, you'll get a new random delay. Now let us actually figure out what the delay is. Okay. Let's figure out what the delay is by just looking at the pulse, which we get. Okay. So, and I'm also going to do one thing to cross check our answer. I'm going to add a way to view this delay. So control F or command F. 
and I will say QT GY number sync. So this number sync will display a number. So my delay is between 0 and uh, 100. So I can just call it let's say short and uh, number of inputs 1 minimum is uh, 0 maximum is uh, 50 and uh, let me add a constant source control f or command f c o n s the constant source constant source i think of type short yes and this constant store source will be the random delay if i now execute this flow graph you can see that the random delay is 17 here now let's verify what this random delay is as shown here okay the time over here at which the peak occurs is 0. Point, let's say 604 604 milliseconds so 0. 0.604 milliseconds so divide by 1000 to get seconds times 192000 gives me 116 so that corresponds to about a 117 samples of delay. Now 117 samples of delay, if you take modulo 50, that's exactly 17, which is what you get over here. It's 17 samples of delay. That makes complete sense. Let's do it one more time. If I run it again, I'm not going to look below. I'm just going to look at this number at the peak. So this is 0. Point I'm just going to say 0 0.6927 okay 0 0.6927 so 0 0.6927 by 1000 so this corresponds to 133 so 134 must be the number the modulo will give me 34 this is correct just something to keep in mind that you must actually before doing this take absolute value so I did not do that so let me just add an absolute value so control F or command F I'll say abs and I'm guessing that I can take float here and I'll connect this I'll connect this and now let me change my filter to something else let me change my filter to uh, let's say instead of this I'll do np dot a range let's say minus 50 through 50 it's like a ramp okay which goes minus 50 to 50 has the same hundred length so now let's check what this is yeah i can't add uh, uh, you know zeros uh, to a an array so uh, let me just put list here so that it becomes a list which is going to take care of things now if i execute this once again i get a very similar kind of pulse but i get two you know this kind of pattern because of the modulus operation because of the ramp now let's look at the peak over here peak is at let's say 0 0.6767 6767 let's see what 6767 means about 130 so 131 should be my answer and 131 modulo 50 is 31 so we got it so this method which is proposed in the slides which we saw does indeed work very well to find the delays but let us also see how this translates when we actually implement it in a practical scenario with all our you know uh, interpolation and uh, pulse shape which is closer to root raise cosine and so on. In this lecture using GNU radio we have essentially seen how we can simulate the effect of a delay and use the ML that is maximum likelihood delay estimation approach to characterize the delay appropriately. One limitation is that we used a single pulse which is consistent with what we did in class but a practical approach would require you to estimate the delay when you have a symbol a signal that is more complicated and has several data sequences as well. In the next lecture we will try to put together a simulation based on this and see how well that works and what adjustments have to be made in such a scenario. Thank you.